What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Uh, today, I have a lot of books again. Uh, if you didn't like the last video because of the shortness, well, I got good news for you. Uh, again, I apologize for my voice. I'm still sick with a cold. It just won't go away. And then you get allergies on top of it, and it makes for a really fun time. Uh, we're going to start with some new books first. I haven't showed any new books in a while. I'm a bit behind on my reading still. Um, we got Power Girl number 8. This is a House of Brainiac tie-in. Uh, you got Crush here. <clears throat> Rise of the Powers of X number 4. I really don't understand what's going on in this series. Uh, I didn't understand Powers of X originally back in 2019. I still don't understand it. it makes absolutely no sense. Um, but I read it because I figure it'll somehow tie into the fall of X. I don't understand how so far. but We got Wolverine number 48. This is part 8 of the Sabretooth War. We are two issues away from the end of the first Wolverine series. But I already saw uh, a variant cover that they're going to be doing for a new Wolverine series, presumably. So, obviously that one wasn't going away. We got Creature from the Black Lagoon Lives, number one. Uh, this is a popular book right now. A lot of Creature from the Black Lagoon fans. I myself am one of them. I love the original movie. I really hope that we can get a reboot someday. It's stuck in development hell. It's been stuck there for a while now, so... I don't know, but uh, you never know. I hear that they do want to rehash the Universal Monsters, which I think would be great. Uh, you know, it was 80 years ago, I think. Maybe even longer that the, the Universal Monsters really had their time to shine, so I would love to see an updated version. But, uh, you know, for now, at least we got the comic books. We got Batman Dark Age number two. I still haven't quite figured out what the premise of this series is. Uh, one interesting thing, though, is Bruce Wayne is in jail. So, so far, we're, like, before he's become Batman, and he's uh, got himself in jail, and it look like, looks like he's going to be there for a while. So that is a uh, interesting addition to the Batman mythos. Flash number eight, uh, another book that's just really confusing to me and I have a hard time understanding what's going on. Uh, it's not as bad as uh, Powers of X, but it's pretty confusing at times. I think the annual comes out this week. I don't know if I'm going to get the annual. I don't typically do annuals because a lot of times they don't tie into the current storyline, so I'm kind of like, what's the point? Uh, Red Sonia number 10. I read issue 9. I vaguely remember what's going on in the series. I mostly pick it up for the covers, though, like everyone else. I mean, that's just such a nice cover, you know. Excusing the pretty lady, it's just a really beautiful cover overall. Uh, we got Carnage number 6, part 4 of Symbiosis Necrosis. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to read Venom or Carnage after this storyline ends. I'm definitely not going to read Venom at least until the Bloodline stuff is over. Uh, this next issue of Venom, which comes out this week, is a Bloodline crossover. I do not care about the Bloodline stuff. Vampires don't interest me. I feel like it's an overdone trope. So, um, maybe after that's over, depending on what the storyline is, I might continue reading it. Uh, also, sorry if there's a glare here. I don't know where this glare is coming from. It's typically not there. I didn't put in new light bulbs or anything, so I don't know what the deal is. We got Symbiote Spider-Man 2099 number 2. Cool cover there. Transformers number 7. Uh, I really wanted to get the uh, Energon Universe free comic book day, but uh, my cold was really, really kicking me on... Uh, Saturday, and uh, I didn't make it to the comic shop, which really sucks, because there were local artists and creators there, and I really love um, seeing the artists. I really have gotten in lately into uh, commissions and stuff. I'm actually getting myself a... I've commissioned a sketch card, like an Emma Frost uh, sketch card from a professional artist, and uh, I haven't seen it yet. I'm really, really excited to get it, though. It'll be like a complete mystery when I get it in the mail, so... 
Yeah, that really sucks. Um, I know the regular Energon Universe special comes out this week. I don't know if I'm going to get it. Uh, it does have a Transformers story in it, but it's also G.I. Joe, and um, I can't remember the other series, so I'm not super interested in that part, and it's kind of a heavy week for me, so. Ultimate X-Men number two. Uh, another nice Peach Momoko. I, I don't know how long this series is going to go on. You know, I don't know if this is planning to be like an ongoing series, if there's a certain issue limit that they believe they're going to hit. This, to me, right now, just does not seem like a series that will be able to like sustain for a long period of time. I mean, of course, the series just started, but so far it's like, I don't know how much we can really do with this. Uh, you know, with the Spider-Man, I haven't actually read it myself, but I've heard the premise of it, and it sounds like there's a lot they can do with that. So with this, I don't know, but like I said, it just started. Yeah. Action Comics 1064, this is part one of House of Brainiac. Uh, I haven't read any of the House of Brainiac stuff yet. I haven't heard anything about it yet, so uh, I'm completely fresh going into it. And there's Wolverine 47, which that's part 7 of Sabretooth War. And then we got Batman First Night. Uh, I haven't read this issue yet either. I really uh, want to. I just want to get through my other stuff first. Uh, but uh, issue 1 was amazing. This is probably my favorite series right now. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, this takes place back in 1939, I think it was when Batman debuted, so this is like kind of a, a classic Batman story in the literal sense, except I don't think this Batman kills like that one did, but it's really, really cool. Uh, if you're into like neo-noir detective things like that, you know, pulp stuff, I know Batman's kind of already that, but if you're into like the real, like the old stuff, like the 40s noir and uh, pulps, then you will love this. We got Spawn 352. I started reading Spawn again. I've read Spawn on and off many times over the years. Uh, this is a really nice cover. I feel like it's an homage to one of the early Spawn issues. I'm not quite sure which one. Uh, what's really funny is back before I stopped reading Spawn this last time, so they print fan art in the back of the book, and I do do some drawing, and I really wanted to submit a Spawn to see if maybe it'd get put in there. Uh, I practiced it for a while, and I sent in my best one, and I stopped reading around that time, so I have no clue if it ever got put in, and I'm really interested to go back and see if it's in there. Uh, I would have to go back a while, because this was last summer, so like almost a whole year ago, and uh, yeah, I'd just be really interested to see if it made the cut. I've seen some not-so-great ones in there, so I feel like mine... Had a decent shot at it. I'm not saying my art was great, but like, if those people can get in, so can I. Uh, and then we got Rat City as well. This is a new Spawn spinoff. Uh, this takes place in the future. This is about a soldier who gets his Spawn powers from his cybernetic implants. Or his artificial implants, whatever you want to call it. He's got like artificial legs. Monsters Are My Business, uh, and I think it's got a subtitle of In Business is Good. It doesn't say it on here. Issue 1. Uh, I haven't read this yet, but the premise was just too nuts to not pick up. Uh, there's a chainsaw-wielding koala bear. Like, I saw that line, and I was like, I'm buying this. Uh, it's like a, a biker and... Uh, a necromancer, and uh, a chainsaw-wielding koala bear battle, like, extra-dimensional evil forces. I mean, like, like I said, I was sold on the koala bear, so, I mean, it can only go up from there, I guess. Follow the House of X number four. Um, not much to say about it. It's an okay series, I guess. Just, I don't know, I feel like nothing of, like, I mean, I guess there are stuff that's happening that's important to X-Men, but I feel like we're just kind of stuck in between here until the new X-Men series starts again with the whole big reboot they're doing in, I think, July. So I feel like we're just kind of waiting around for that. We got Superman number 13. This is part two of House of Brainiac. Uh, I think it connects with the action comics, so that's really cool. 
J. Garrick, The Flash, number six. Uh, this is the final issue of this series. Uh, I thought Green Lantern would have been around, ending around the same time, too, but I don't think, I think issue five still has to come out. Uh, I think Green Lantern got delayed at some point for some reason. And uh, Justice Society continues to be delayed constantly. I have no idea why. People say it's Jeff Johns. I, I don't know if it actually is or not. If it is, then, like, why is he allowed to get away with that? I know he's a big name. I know he's working on a lot of stuff, but I don't know. I don't know if it's actually him. I don't know what it is. But it's really annoying. Uh, then we got Batman Superman World's Finest number 26. I think this is like a bunch of first appearances of different like might characters, like versions of like Mixelpick and Batmite. I think I originally I think they said it was like the first appearance of like a Joker might or something. I don't know, I haven't uh read it yet. Sorry if it sounds like I'm out of breath at all. I was um running up and down the steps doing stuff before I was doing this video and it's made my cough kick in, so every time I breathe, I feel like I have to cough. Anyway, uh, we got a couple Darkwing Duck books here. There's a, a few variants that I didn't have. Uh, we got Darkwing Duck number one. I don't know that this is anything special about this variant. Uh, it's a cool one, though. Uh, and then we got number three. Again, I think it's just your basic variant. There's a Virgin of this one. The Virgin's worth quite a bit of money. Uh, but this one, just regular variant. Uh, now we have some books that I traded with a buddy of mine. Uh, he doesn't like DC. He only likes Marvel. So I traded him some of my Marvel stuff, and he gave me what DC he had. I traded him some of my uh, Spider-Man and uh, some of my uh, Magic from X-Men, those books. Uh, he likes Magic. That's one of his favorite characters, so... Uh, I gave him a couple of those and uh, some cool Spider-Man books. And uh, this is what he gave me. He gave me uh, Batman Eternal number 48. Uh, I never read Batman Eternal. I think it was going on at the same time as the um, main New 52 Batman series. I think it came out like weekly even. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, Green Arrow number three, nice Mike Grell book there. Uh, really, really nice cover. Uh, I can't help but laugh at this one. Fire and Ice, welcome to Smallville issue four variant. I, <laughs> I don't even think there's anything I can say. Uh, Batman Superman number 13, this is a cool variant or not i'm sorry this this isn't a variant i don't think i think this is the main cover it's a cool cover uh the commissioner and the clown oh this is joker number five i'm sorry this is a like supposed to be like a movie poster variant like an old movie poster uh really really like this one uh, i had a punchline in the last video that was kind of similar it was supposed to look like an old carnival poster This is a sick book. Detective Comics number 16, part of Death of the Family. Really, really cool. And I have some more Death of the Family uh, Batgirl coming. I'm going to have to do so much editing this video, I cannot stop coughing. Uh, 52, issue 8, or week 8, whatever you'd like to say. I don't think this one is a key. Uh, then we got Before Watchmen, Minutemen, number 4 of 6. I haven't read any of the Before Watchmen stuff. Uh, I really enjoyed Watchmen, though, so, you know, I figured I'd collect uh, some of the before Watchmen. Okay, I got water, so hopefully I'll be good now. Uh, Venom the Mace, part one, or issue one, I should say. Uh, this is actually an embossed cover. I think that's what you would call it. It's, you can't even tell, but it's got texture and everything right here, and it almost looks like it's popping out at you. Really cool. I got the full set. Uh, issue two. That one's not embossed. Uh, and then we got issue three. And then to go with that, we have Amazing Spider-Man number 378. This is part three of Maximum Carnage. Uh, classic cover there. Uh, now, a lot of these next books... 
maybe all of them even, were from a a show where it was like, kind of like getting rid of a bulk show. Um, it was like ten dollars for eleven books out of the short box, and one of them had a uh, a board that said slab, and you got a slab. It was a um, one of the new fifty two Batman books, and it was actually signed and obviously graded. It was signed by um, um, Scott Snyder. So that was a really cool book to uh, put up. I didn't win that, unfortunately. Uh, a friend of mine won it, though, and he also gave me, like, most of his DC books, so I'm content. There was a lot of them that I'm not keeping that I have in another box again. I've got now two boxes of books of stuff I'm not keeping, but that's another thing. Anyway, this is the stuff I'm keeping. Uh, we got Savage Dragon number one. I think this is volume two. Uh, I wish I could get into Savage Dragon. I feel like it would be weird to jump onto it now because it's like, what issue is it even on? It's like issue 200 something. I don't even know. But yeah, Savage Dragon's still going. Um, I honestly do not know what it's about. All the covers that I see nowadays of Savage Dragon are like very cartoony and funny. So, I don't know, has this always been like that or not? I mean, he's a very cool-looking character. But, uh, yeah, I guess I'd maybe pick up a graphic novel or something. We got Danger Girl Kamikaze number one. I have no clue what this is. Uh, honestly, I thought this was a Top Cow book. It says Cliffhanger, though. Uh, for some reason, this gave me kind of like Top Cow vibes. This was really cool. Voltron number three. I don't think this is an Alex Ross cover, but looking at it, it kind of looks like it. And now I'm curious. Let's open it. It actually is. Uh, I had no idea Alex Ross did Voltron. That's really, really cool. Uh, Firestorm number 64. Not something I typically collect, but it is like one of those big uh, DC titles. And, you know, if I get them, I'll take them, so. This was a cool one to find in there. Predator Race War number zero. Uh, it's out of four, technically out of five. Uh, Superman 84. There's a few Superman in here. Uh, I don't have any of these, so, you know, it's fine with me getting it for a little less than a dollar. <laughs> Number 85. Uh, Justice League number 5. I think... Is this from the miniseries? I don't remember. Uh, Superman 687. I can't remember if this is the main cover or the variant cover of this issue. Uh, the other one is one of those die-cut covers. I think this might be the die-cut for the uh, Eradicator. Just judging off the Last Son of Krypton poster. We got Action Comics number 740. Way down there. No clue who that is. Uh, cool cover. Maybe Doomsday? I don't know. Cloak and Dagger number one. I think this is Cloak and Dagger's first solo series. So that's a pretty uh, nice book to get for less than a dollar. And then we got Adventures of Superman 501. I think... They used to say this was the first appearance of Superboy, uh, Con L, but I think now they say this is just his first solo story. This one has a little bit of, uh, issues. I think this one was a freebie. Uh, it's got some spine ticks and stuff, but it's not, you know, really like a crazy key book anyway, so. Uh, we got JLA number six. Uh, I haven't read this JLA series. I've heard good things about it, so I've been kind of picking it up here and there. Uh, Uncanny X-Men 345, this is actually the first appearance of Maggot. Uh, so that was another cool book, at least to me, to get for less than a dollar. Uh, another JLA, this is issue 8. Uh, Captain Adam number 1, this is actually the first appearance of this version of Captain Adam that we all know. Uh, I think his name is Nathaniel Adam. Uh, so that's a pretty good book to have. Uh, there are, like, rumors about him with James Gunn. I don't care about that stuff. So, 
But it's cool to me because, you know, he's a major DC character. Uh, this is a looked like a funny one. I haven't read it yet. Uh, I want to. This is... Oh, God. What's the actual title? This is an Aardvark Vanaheim book. Uh, Two-Fisted Suspense Stories from the Haunt at the Vault in the Crypt. Normal Man number three. So there you go. We got Brightest Day Aftermath, The Search for Swamp Thing number one. And number two. It's a three-parter, though. So no three. As you can see, those last two books decided they wanted to fall over. Uh, we've got Earth X number 8, nice Alex Ross cover. And then we got number 10, another nice one. I think it's number 11 that's blown up because it's the first Shalabal as Silver Surfer, who is going to be Silver Surfer in the Fantastic Four movie. Who really cares, though? Uh, Uncanny X-Men 297. I swore I had this book. I've seen it so many times, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure I have that book. Well, I didn't, so it's a good thing I got it in this uh, dollar pool. I mean, I would have figured it out eventually, I guess, but maybe it's just because I've seen it so many times that I've become familiar with it, so I'm thinking that I have it. I don't know. We got Teen Titans number 50 uh, from the 2003 series, which is my personal favorite series. Uh, I will say, I do think I like this better than New Teen Titans, which may be blasphemous for some people, but... In my opinion, I like this better. We got X Factor number 27. I've uh, been finding some X Factor books I don't have. Somebody actually had a shit ton of them. Excuse my language. Um, of like the later number ones that I'm pretty sure I didn't have, but it was like a claim sale and they were going quickly. And I was like, ah, I don't have time to look. I'm just not even going to bother. So. But yeah, I did get a, a bunch that uh, I sent a list to somebody. I think I may have said it in a previous video. And they went and found me like 20 issues or something. So that's really nice. And uh, like 30 issues of New Mutants as well. So that's cool. Uh, we got X-Factor number 27 though. This looks like it may be a Christmas issue. Although it says April, so maybe not. But that looks like a Christmas tree. We got number 22... Number 21, number 20, uh, we got Batman 668, uh, 634, I love this uh, cover, I can't remember who was doing the covers at this time, but I love them. Uh, Batman 383. Oh, this is a sick Hubert cover. X-Men number 33. Then we got an X-Men 243. I have not been finding X-Men of this era lately. Uh, I haven't been finding a lot of older X-Men like at all. And if I have, you know, it's gone up quite a lot. I think it's one thing is X-Men 97 and another is... MCU speculation. Uh, then we got X-Men Annual number 2. X-Men number 32. Another really nice Cuber cover. Uh, Uncanny 225. <laughs> Uncanny 190. Such a weird, weird cover. This one's... Uh, Kind of beat up. We got 180. Uh, 189. We got some Nightwing. We got number 95. Number 50. Actually, I think some of this stuff was claim sale. Not all of it was... Um, that game I was talking about. Uh, number 47. Number 41. Uh, then we got a Detective 671. Thought that was really cool with all the uh, classic monsters on the cover. Yeah, actually a lot of this stuff is claim sales stuff. Those X-Factors, 
Uh, actually, I want to say those weren't the ones that were, um, gotten for me. I think those were just ones that, uh, they happen to have. Uh, then we got Detective 832. Uh, Batman 650. Batman Chronicles number 20. <clears throat> Lobo number 15. Thought this was a really cool cover. Birds of Prey number 91. Really nice cover. Uh, I had never seen this before. I like to collect a lot of Batman stuff, if you can't tell. Uh, this is the Bat Batman the 12 Cent Adventures number one. Uh, I really don't know much about this outside of, you know, it was a one shot and it was 12 cents. JSAR Worlds at War number one. What's really funny is I've read this whole JSA run, but I don't think I ever read this. It doesn't seem familiar to me. Uh, we got Brightest Day, Birds of Prey, number two. Uh, Detective Comics 789, I think that's the Tim Sale cover. Oops. Batman 554, there was way more Batman than this. I was trying to limit myself. Teen Titans number 38. I think this has some key significance to it. We got 49. Number 9. I think this is where um, Impulse officially becomes Kid Flash. We got Teen Titans, the Legion special. Uh, this was a one-shot. This uh, was part of a storyline that was going on in the Teen Titans at the time where Superboy was... I don't even remember how. Superboy got sent into the future with the Legion. Uh, and then they had a crossover with the Legion where the Legion and the Teen Titans fought. I can't remember who. It might have been like Brainiac and a bunch of different Brainiacs. I don't remember. Something along those lines. And then this turned into another uh, big storyline for the Teen Titans. We got the Spectre number two. This is the um, Hal Jordan Spectre. I honestly didn't know he had a series. And it ran for a while as well. I have number one in here somewhere. We got Superman number 32. Love that, like, gladiator Superman. We got Superman number eight. Giant Size Captain Marvel number one. It's got some wear, but really cool book from 1975. And then on the back is a, um, I'm not sure why this is on the back. I, it was a book I got. I guess they just put it on there to be safe. Uh, Betty and Veronica number 73. I don't typically buy Archie stuff, but it was really cheap, and there were some older ones uh, you'll see in here. Um, but yeah, also, I think this may be a Jack Kirby, but I'm not super sure. That Captain America looks very Jack Kirby, though. Yeah, like this, um, Archie's Christmas, or I'm sorry, Archie Giant Series Magazine number 144. Um, I can't remember what year this is from. I don't think this is quite 60s. I think it might be early 70s. It's got some wear, but, uh, it was a cool Christmas cover and it was a dollar, so. And then this is one from the 60s, uh, Laugh number 190 you can see it's from 67 uh again got some wear but it was only a dollar and the main reason i got it it we got a little appearance from the beatles here i'm a big beatles fan i like to collect uh beatles stuff so uh that was the main reason i picked it up uh we got justice league america number 211 this one's got some issues and it's also got an interesting sticker or stamp, uh, says discard. No clue what that, I mean, I don't know why that would be on there. Uh, if anyone could help me out with that, I'd be really interested to know what that was for. We got Justice League America 229. Uh, Brightest Day Birds of Prey number one. 
there may be some significance to this. Tarzan 228, uh, just, it was a dollar, you know, an old DC book, cool cover, why not? Birds of Prey number 79, nice cover. Marvel Comics Presents number 9, not sure who's on the back of these, though. Marvel Comics Presents, if you don't know, there's always uh, a front cover and a back cover. So, I'm not sure who's on the back of these, but I'm actually kind of curious now. Uh, we got Cloak, El Aguila, and the Man Thing. I guess it's more of a wraparound cover than it is a back cover, but I have seen some of them with actual back covers. Uh, then we got number three. Which is Shang-Chi, The Thing, and Man-Thing. Number five. We got another man thing, old hornhead, and Shang Chi. So all the same, except they kick the thing out. How sad. Then we got number four. A little different this time we got again man thing master of kung fu and this time they replaced daredevil with thor or rather daredevil replaced thor thor actually replaced thing and then daredevil replaced thor uh we got wolverine number 74 uh at first i liked this cover but then i saw <laughs> Look at how Wolverine is drawn. Who that? Who drew this? Like Jubilee looks great. The Sentinel looks great. Oh my God. That's concerning. Here's a better one. Wolverine fifty five. Dynamo Joe number one. Uh, I have no clue what this is about. It looked cool. Uh, looks like Voltron. So. Uh, Grendel, Devil by the Deed. Uh, I don't really know what this is. I want to say maybe reprinting stories? I don't know. <laughs> okay, this one, this one's kind of a funny story. Um, so, when I, this was a, it was a claim sale, and the person who was, uh, doing the books was like, oh, this next one's for you, talking to me, and I just hit claim immediately, and that's what it was, and I was just like, and they were like, oh, you don't have to claim it if you don't want it, and I was just like, eh, whatever. I mean, it's a nice cover, but it looks a little girly, so. Another older Archie, um, Archie Giant series, number 241, another Christmas book. Don't know what year this one is from, uh, if I had to guess, I'd say... Honestly, I don't even know if this is 70s. This might be 80s. We've got some issues of the thing. We got thing number seven. Number six. We got a nice thing cover. Uh, Fantastic Four 181. I mean, that's just classic right there. Is this a like Kirby? Uh, I don't, yeah, I think I looked it up and it was, it was a Kirby, yeah. <coughs> we got Avengers Invaders number four, nice Alex Ross cover. We got number one. Oh, uh, we got Nightwatch number five. I have no clue who Nightwatch is. 
I only learned about him recently. He looks like a Spawn knockoff. Uh, I believe Spawn came before, right? It's in 94. Uh, but it's a cool Venom cover. And I mean, to be honest, he does look cool even if he is a knockoff of Spawn. Got Infinity Ink number four. That's a nice cover. Uh, number three. Uh, Infinity Ink number 20. Um, I want to say this is the first appearance of uh, Beth Chapel as Dr. Midnight, and I want to say it's the first appearance of Rick Tyler. It they may not, it may not be her as Dr. Midnight. It may just be her first appearance. Uh, number 28, McFarlane stuff. Number 27, another McFarlane. 37. I love this cover. Uh, Infinity Inc. Annual number one. We got Super, or I'm sorry, New Adventures of Superboy number one. Uh, Batman Gotham Knights, number three. I thought this was just a cool-looking cover. I used to see so much Gotham Knights uh, years and years ago, like, just permeating the dollar bin issues everywhere. And I have not seen it in a really long time. Here's a cool foil. Superman number 82. I love it. We got Su or I'm sorry, Action Comics 706. Almost said Supergirl. We got Justice League of America number 218. Uh, Justice League Unlimited number 32. A lot of these Cartoon Network books have a lot of value to them, so to get them for a dollar uh, is a good deal. Justice League of America 223. Justice League Adventures, number six. This is from that original series. Batman Gotham Knight, number 50. Thought it was a cool cover. Uh, Justice League of America, 230. I like that era of Justice League with the floating heads. <clears throat> Batman Annual, number 15. Uh, Batman 622, and we are ending it on Spectre number one. So, that was a long video, at least for me. It's probably still going to be a long video. I have to do a lot of editing. I was coughing a lot. But anyway, uh, if you watched the last video, you saw that I said I was going to do a video of VHS. Well, I got the box of VHS in, and then I put them away. I kind of forgot I was going to do a video. And there was a whole box of them, so it was a lot, and I had to move, I had to maneuver on the shelf to get them in there, so I don't want to take them out now, so, uh, if you were looking forward to that, I'm sorry, but, uh, I will have some Marvel cards coming in, I'm gonna do another Marvel card video, I haven't done one of those in probably a year, I just haven't bought any, um, but the new set, uh, what, what is it called, Platinum, I can't even remember, is, uh, had me interested in the Marvel cards again because the the card art was just so nice, even the, the base cards. Uh, it's a pretty pricey set, though. I'm gonna try and uh, buy myself a blaster box because the blaster boxes are cheaper, but it's hard to find one for the retail price because it's such a popular set that people are buying them and jacking up the price. Uh, I haven't actually gotten to open any packs yet. I've only gotten some singles, so... Hopefully I can get some of that. Anyway, uh, I'll see you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe if you if you liked it. Uh, leave your comments. Leave a like. I'll see you next time. Peace.